Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Game Plan. This is about the Oakland Raiders versus the Cincinnati Bengals in week 11 of the NFL season. Um, if you're new to the show, I, br I briefly run down the key injuries for both teams. I look at the key um, you know, yards of accumulation, both offensive and, and defensive. I look at the key gambler stats. I'll explain those when I get there if you're new to the, uh, the world of against the spread betting um, and why and how that uh, matters for fantasy football and schematics. Um, then we're going to talk about a path to success, a path to victory for both the Raiders and the Bengals. Yes, there are paths to success and victory for the winless Bengals. I'm going to put one together for them. And then we end the video with fantasy football projections. As always, if you're interested in fantasy football projections, either reply in a comment to this video, uh, follow me on Twitter, figure something out, just contact me. I'll, I'll figure out a way to get them to you. I give them away for free. Uh, before we get rolling here, as I always say, please, guys uh, and gals, if you can give me a like and a subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Basically, long story short, YouTube locks production features for us until we get to a certain um, uh, point in our channel development. We would love to put links, um, you know, make these videos more interactive. We can't do that without more support for everybody out there. It really does make a difference, and uh, we really do want to make these videos better for you. Um, so please help us grow by, once again, and liking and subscribing. But the first thing I'm going to do in this video uh, is look at, uh, as I always do, look at the uh, key injuries for both teams. And so for the uh, for the Raiders, they have some big names up there. Um, but uh, thankfully, I guess for the Raiders, they've been more banged up, in my opinion. Uh, all these guys are questionable, um, so that bodes well for them playing. Josh Jacobs has been on the injury report, I think, since, um, since the London game. Um, and he's been playing. I think he'll be fine. Rodney Hudson, Trent Brown, two key offensive linemen. I tend to think both will play. You got uh, Dwayne Harris, uh, Mullen, and Joyner. Uh, Joyner is also doubtful. That's that's unfortunate. You know the uh, the Oakland Raiders have been giving up yardage in the passing game. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, although they have been better, they have been better. Raiders fans, I've seen it. I've seen it. Believe me, I've seen it. Uh, for the Bengals, AJ Green's been questionable um, or out all year. Um, I think he's going to be perpetually questionable. I doubt that he's going to play just because that seems to be where the momentum's going. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Erickson is also questionable. Um, Bobby. Hart, uh, Geno Atkins, that's a big one. He's questionable. And uh, Kirk Patrick, who's very key in this particular matchup, is also questionable. We'll talk about that in a bit in terms of uh, schematics and paths to victory. Uh, let's look next at the key yardage accumulation for both offense and defense. And I like to put um, matchup versus matchup. So, for example, I have the, Ra the, the Raiders offense in that first row there, ranked 15th, versus the 22nd ranked passing defense for the Bengals. Meanwhile, the Bengals passing offense is 14th versus the 30th ranked um, passing defense for the Raiders. I said Raiders. I noticed that the uh, the Raiders have been playing a little bit better. They're actually moving up in the rankings. Good for them. Um, but in, in all seriousness, they've been playing better the last couple of weeks. That's good. Um, and also, I think that 14th ranking for the Bengals should come with a little bit of an asterisk. Um, that yardage accumulation, most of that came with Andy Dalton throwing the ball at quarterback. Um, obviously, Ryan Finley is now the quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals. So it's a little bit of an unknown entity. I think that rating is a little bit artificially high in my opinion. Uh, run off for the Raiders, not surprisingly, is top 10 behind what they're doing with Jacobs and their other stable running backs there. 32nd ranked running defense. Oh, we can see a mismatch already, can't we? And then we have the run um, offense for the Bengals, 30th uh, versus the 10th ranked run defense for Oakland. That doesn't bode well. That looks to me like Oakland's going to be able to control the lines of scrimmage um, offensively and defensively. It looks like Oakland will be the aggressor in the running game. And I always kind of favor the team that can out physical the other game. When I mean out physical, I mean have more tough running yardage. Um, we'll talk about this um, as the pass to victory. Not all hope is lost, Cincinnati Bengals fan. I will give you that. I, will, I said fan, like there's one of you left. I will give you a path to victory, fans. I'm not trying to uh, make light of this. Uh, just to remind everybody, too, I'm actually not a fan of either of these teams. I'm really uh, kind of fan agnostic. I grew up a Redskins fan, believe it or not. Um, and uh, I have very vivid, uh, wonderful memories of the 80s and 90s when they went on their Super Bowl runs. Then, uh, you know, fa flash forward, Dan Snyder bought the team, and he's ruined my joy. So now I'm just an, an NFL orphan. I like all teams. I just like watching the games and really getting into the schematics, and that's why I do these videos. Let's talk about the key gambler stats. If you're new to the idea of gamblers, um, I apologize as I keep repeating myself for my uh, return viewers here. Gambler statistics, why are these important? A couple reasons, but really, they do a really good job of really kind of taking emotion out of it and really looking at what's important. And what is important to gamblers? Everybody has their secret sauce, but the, the, the key ones tend to be yards per play. That is to say, how efficient are you play to play? How many yards can you score? Or I'm sorry, can you uh, can you make? How many yards can you stop if you're a defense? Uh, then you look at third and fourth 
fourth down uh, percentage. Okay, you're good at, at uh, accumulating yards, but are you good in key situations, third downs and fourth downs? Then you look at red zone touchdown percentage. Are you taking field goals or are you getting into the end zone? Um, then lastly, you look at turnover margin just to make sure you're not giving away too many possessions per game. So let's dial in here. Um, you have the Raiders offense uh, averages 6.1 yards per play. That's good. You want to see an offense above uh, 6 point, um, or I'm sorry, 6. The Bengals defense gives up 5.7 yards per play. High fives, not so great. It's not the worst I've seen, um, but it's certainly not great, okay? Then you look at the Cincinnati um, offense, 4.8 yards per play. Literally, that is the worst yards per play average I've seen since starting to do these videos. I don't know if they're last. They got to be damn near it. Um, and then changing at quarterback is tough. And really, why is the reason? Is because all their yards are basically coming through the air, um, with the exception of last week when they lost by 30-something points, I think, to uh, Baltimore. Uh, Joe Mixon has not been able to get anything going. Wouldn't you know it, Joe Mixon gets 114 yards or something when they're losing by 30. Well, uh, can he make it happen when the game's still in doubt? Can he make it happen in key situations? We haven't seen it this year, um, but uh, there you go. So if you look at this, obviously yards per play is a heavy, heavy advantage for the Oakland Raiders. Um, you look at third down percentage. Offense um, converts only 47.8. I'd like to see that number over 50. Uh, they were a little bit better. Um, I think they must have uh, had trouble um, in recent games because there was a point where I was doing these videos. I think they were around 60%. Um, but uh, either way, you know, you want to see this over 50% for an offense, but it's not awful. Um, the Bengals defense gets off the field 44% of the time. Uh, so that's, I should say, gets off the field 56% of the time. Uh, the lower the percentage for defense is the better. Meanwhile, the the, the Cincinnati Bengals, 39.7%. Uh, you don't like to see a three there in that uh, third down conversion percentage. Um, I think, uh, in fact, I was doing the Denver video. They were at 28%. Ugh, that's bad. Uh, so at least Cincinnati is a little bit better offensively there. Now, um, third down percentage in terms of giving up, uh, Oakland's about as good as Cincinnati's. They're very close in percentage points. Again, based on the offenses and the power of the offenses, no surprise here you give that advantage towards Oakland. Fourth down uh, conversions, again, probably a heavier advantage towards Oakland there. Red zone percentage, heavy advantage, 60% for Oakland. Cincinnati's offense is only pushing it into the end zone 33% of the time that's not going to get it done uh and then turnover margin actually cincinnati does better um than uh than oakland does um although i i gotta be honest with you i'm second guessing myself i wonder if that should be a negative 1.2 for cincinnati maybe it was a typo uh but let's just say hey look you know what Oakland's had the advantage everywhere else let's just give that advantage to cincinnati okay uh now let's move it over to the pass to victory I'm going to start with the Raiders. Uh, take advantage against playing the 30th ranked run defense in the league. Uh, you got to give Jacobs a, a lot of carries. Everything he can handle. I know his shoulder is banged up there. Give him everything he can handle. Run it up the middle. If you need to spell him with Richard or Washington or the new guy that they have in the backfield there, whatever. Uh, just keep running early and often. Control that line of scrimmage uh, because that's what it looks like. Okay, That's what it looks like you'll be able to do, I should say. The Bengals are going to give up yardage in the screen game. I think Jalen and Richard should be uh, more involved or Washington or whoever you want, um, just go ahead and uh, and play both of those guys um, out of the backfield. I think you're going to make it a very easy day for Derek Carr. Um, speaking of Derek Carr in that passing game, uh, the middle of the field should be open uh, for Cincinnati. A lot of teams have been attacking them. The NFL is a copycat league. Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro should have really nice games this week if Oakland chooses to have them make good games. I mean, they could have uh, Josh Jacobs run for four touchdowns this week, honestly. I mean, it's that kind of game for them. They can play a balanced attack, but they can. Uh, Oakland is going to be able to attack um, up the middle, basically through the run game and through the pass game all game long. Uh, continue the improved passing defense. Uh, the one weakness here that we've been talking about on these um, programs for the last few weeks is that teams can get yardage on Oakland secondary, especially um, you know with I think their free safety questionable at this point. Uh, if AJ Green plays, that could be a little bit of an issue. That opens up like Tyler Boyd. That opens up Auden Tate to get down the line. Uh, in my fantasy football projections, I am um, including AJ Green in the projections just because. Because, uh, but uh, you know, it's really all about whether or not Ryan Finley can beat them um, deep. I don't know if he can, um, and I think Oakland will put the pressure on him to see if he can. And then, lastly, uh, obviously. 
uh, shut down the run game. Uh, now, it's been easy for teams to do that, uh, I think, against Cincinnati so far, but make Ryan Finley beat you. I don't think that's uh, really surprising for anybody to hear. Um, you know, rather than me say, hey, don't turn the ball over a bunch of times, make Ryan Finley beat you, right? Uh, don't let Joe Mixon, don't let Gio Bernard get anything going. Just make him throw down the field and see if he can do it, okay? And if he can, then adjust. Um, that's what adjustments for are for at halftime. Now, for Cincinnati, your path to, to your first victory of the season, let me lay it out for you, and it's going to be a task. It's going to be hard, but here it is, okay? The offense, uh, the offensive red zone percentage is awful. First and foremost, you need to improve that. Uh, you need to be aggressive on fourth downs in the red zone, and you need to push the ball in, okay? Whether it's 33% there or whether it's a third down percentage and you're in the 30s or something like that, have the confidence. You have to go for it. You can't play, um, you know, and, and keep losing points. You can't trade touchdown for field goal you, game after game. Again, I'm not telling you anything like earth shattering right now. You got to get seven points. You can't get three points all game. It's not going to be enough. Okay. Uh, next, uh, I say it again, the red zone percentage. Sorry. I, I actually, that is such an important point. I actually wrote it as the first sentence, the both one. The first point was actually uh, the Bengals have to have to get Joe Mixon going. Now we talked about the Raiders stopping the run, making uh, Ryan Finley beat them. The Bengals can't afford to make Ryan Finley beat the Oakland Raiders. I think he's too green of a quarterback at this point. Um, you have to get Joe Mixon going. Hopefully he can build up um, off that momentum from last week. Hopefully Baltimore, or I'm sorry, Cincinnati figured out some things in Baltimore. Hopefully they made some adjustments in their bye week going into that Baltimore game that they can keep that run game going. We'll see, uh, but they need Joe Mixon to show up. That's key, okay? Uh, next one is... Um, the Raiders can play a balanced game this week, um, and Cincinnati's hurting schematically. The key to stopping the Raiders is stopping uh, Jacobs. Uh, you need to crash the line of scrimmage. And what does that mean? I think that'll mean, um, as a reaction, is that Oakland will have opportunities on one-on-one -on -one with Tyrell Williams. And when I was saying before that Kirk Patrick is a key to this game, he has to play. I'm assuming he will. He's questionable. Most of the time, questionable uh, players who are questionable will play in the game. Uh, but Kirk Patrick has to lock down. Uh, Williams, and then uh, the the rest of the Bengals basically have their hands full of the running game, and then the game comes uh, is basically down to whether or not Waller and uh, Renfro can beat Cincinnati over the middle like I was talking about before. But if I'm the Bengals, if I'm going to take my chance with something, I would rather Renf uh, let Renfro and Waller try to beat me uh, down the field than Williams or Josh Jacobs. So that's a key. You got to shut down Jacobs first. Easier said than done. And uh, one of the things I always credit Gruden with is his older school mentality. I will say he's one of the most patient play callers. He will stick with the run. Even if he's getting like two yards per carry in the first half, he'll stick with it all game. And that has an impact in the third and fourth quarter as uh, defensive lines get tired. You have to stick with it. You have to keep stopping the run. It is crucial. If uh, Jacobs goes for over 100, 120 yards, game's over, in my opinion. They have to stop him at all costs. Uh, middle of the field seems to be wide open. I was saying that before. Uh, limiting uh, Waller and Renfro after that. I'm saying limit this, limit that. Well, they can't start 20 players defensively, right? It's a pick your poison. First priority is Jacobs. Second priority is uh, Kirkpatrick has to basically win one-on-one -on -one with Williams. And then the rest of the defense has to figure out how to stop the other weapons there for Oakland. Uh, lastly, Oakland has played uh, better the last few weeks. Finley's got to take deep shots, okay? Uh, you can't do the dink and duck thing. Um, you know, Mason Rudolph is kind of making the style of play popular in uh, in Pittsburgh, throwing a lot to the, uh, the running backs, throwing a lot to the tight ends. Mm, that's not going to work here. Uh, Cincinnati, you know, Oakland wants Cincinnati to try try to play some kind of ball control game. They want Cincinnati to try to run the ball um, and beat them with Mixon because they're confident that they can stop Mixon. They want Cincinnati to throw bubble screens and, and short like uh, short passes, uh, you know, out to the flats and these kinds of things. Cincinnati has to throw the ball deep and stretch the secondary for that to work. And can Ryan Finley do that? You look, he didn't have a great successful start, but he was also playing the Baltimore Ravens, who are playing as good as anybody else in the league right now. Now the Oakland Raiders are also, it's hot, okay? This line opened up Cincinnati, I think minus 10.5 or minus 11, or something like that. That's a big line. If I had to guess, I would say Oakland would win this game by 10. So I wouldn't bet this game. It's too big of a line. I usually don't bet um, games with lines over seven points anyway, uh, just because it's a lot of points in the NFL. But um, Cincinnati, you can do it, but you have to force the run game. You have to stop Jacobs. Um, yeah, you got to win your matchups in the, on the outside as well. So 
Again, nothing earth-shattering there, but super important nonetheless. Uh, let's talk about the uh, the fantasy football projections. If you're new, again, RocoBot is just uh, the name that I gave my uh, my fantasy football algorithm that spits out computer projections. These are computer projections. I didn't just sit there with a pen and pad of paper saying, oh, you know, Derek Carr is going to get 20.89. I don't do that. That's stupid. Uh, but I do uh, fantasy football projections. I don't always agree with these, and when I don't, I mark them down. I do like Derek Carr, especially because he's a great waiver play if you need a quarterback this week. Uh, he's available in most leagues out there. 20.89 points. I think that's a start. Josh Jacobs, 17.96 points. I like that. Richard is actually even, um, you know, maybe even a daily fantasy sleeper this week. We talked about using um, them in a screen game. I think he could play well. Um, I'm not going to use him in a fantasy football lineup. Daily fantasy, if I need a budget play, I kind of like that one. Uh, Williams, I don't love this week. I don't like Zay Jones at all this week. Hunter Renfro, I think, is a touchdown candidate. I think that he's a guy, he's certainly emerging. We're seeing him play better and better. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, Oakland's using him more and more. They're trusting him more and more. And I think he's uh, he, he has the opportunity to be a very, very dynamic player, not only in the future, but for the rest of the season as well. I like him in this matchup. I really do. I think he's a great sleeper. Um, again, I'm not going to play him in my fantasy lineup, but I'm going to work him through some daily fantasy rotations. Uh, Darren Waller, I love him this week. He's my number two projected tight end, or I should say Rocco Bot's number two projected tight end. Uh, defense and special teams, I actually don't like it. But, you know, Oakland has kind of a degraded... Um, um, average, I guess, or uh, not average, but projection just because of how poor the uh, secondary played in the first part of the season. Um, so maybe they're a little bit arf- artificially low. Honestly, they'll probably exceed this um, projection, but I'm not going to play them either in daily fantasy lineups or in uh, my fantasy football lineup, certainly. I think they're a definite uh, bench defense this week for Cincinnati. Um, now it, it's funny because if uh, Andy Dalton played, I actually had him at a great projection, like a, at above a 20, but this is Ryan Finley. Uh, his projection goes down a little bit to a 16 Mixon and Gio Bernard. I think they're going to have a tough time getting anything running going. I agree with Rocco Bot's projections. I don't love them this week. Um, AJ green, if he plays, I think he could get behind the defense, but the big question here, and you see uh, Tyler Boyd also has a nice projection. The big question here, everybody is still, can Ryan Finley actually take advantage of the opportunities? Now I think these wide receivers can get behind the secondary, but you have two questions. One, uh, or I guess three, really. Uh, can Ryan Finley, is he a good enough quarterback developmentally to be able to see them, right? If uh, if uh, A.J. Green is streaking behind if he plays, if he's streaking behind the secondary, but the play call, you know, on the left side, the play call is to the right side, um, and, you know, he's supposed to hit somebody in the flat, can he even have the field vision to see A.J. Green? That's a big question, and it's a valid question for a young quarterback. Next one is, um, will Oakland give him the time? <laughs> well, Oakland, are they just going to blitz him like crazy because he's a young guy and they want to see what he can do? Uh, you know, Paul Gunther uh, knows the personnel here with his time being a Cincinnati Bengals defensive coordinator. Is he going to, um, you know, kind of know how to dial up and attack these uh, offensive line? I know it's a different offensive scheme, but, uh, you know, he does have some familiarity with some of their personnel there. Um, and then the third question is... Um, I forgot what the third question is. The first two were so poignant that I actually forgot the third the third question. Well, I'm sorry. It's late, everybody. Uh, but seriously, Ryan Finley, it's all about can he actually do it? We'll see. Uh, Tyler Eifert is actually a fringe start for me. I think the tight end matchup could be a decent one. But again, um, you know, I just have uh, some issues, some questions about Ryan Finley. I'll say this. I'll play a low line um, um, fantasy football, daily fantasy football lineup where I'll start Finley and maybe Tyler Boyd. Um, I'll start those two guys and build my roster and then just, you know, pay through the nose for some of the, like Dalvin Cook and like DeAndre Hopkins and guys like that. So, you know, maybe I'll work them in, but I would never do it in my fantasy lineup. I just think that there, there's way too much variance with the new quarterback. Um, I'm not comfortable with the new quarterback. So there you go. Uh, defense and special teams don't like it at all. I think Oakland will score. So there you go. Uh, that takes me through the deep dive of the Oakland Raiders and the Cincinnati Bengals. As always, you know, we put a lot of effort into this. If you could help repay that effort, once again, buy a like and subscribe. That's all I ask. Um, and uh, also, uh, once again, repeating myself here, but if you want the fantasy football projections for all teams and all players, uh, just comment here. We'll figure out, um, you know, I, I send them uh, via email. So we'll figure out. I'll let you know where to get them. And, uh, you know, we'll move forward. And until then, you know, we do have some other episodes um, of the game plan this week. I might be able to do some more of the weekend if time permits. Uh, and everybody else, you know, check us out. If uh, you don't catch one of those epi- episodes, check out our Week 11 playlist. A lot of good stuff, and we'll catch you on another episode soon. Thanks, everyone.